eBay is going to report their fourth quarter earnings next week, but yesterday's shares of eBay were up 6% on well, activist investors looking to make some changes. Uh, and it's not just one, it's really two. Uh, it, yesterday, the catalyst was uh, Elliott Management coming out with this letter. Elliott Management owns about 4% of eBay, uh, coming out with this letter saying, hey, we'd like to see some changes, and specifically, here are the changes we'd like to see. And we'll get to those in a second. Starboard Value, probably a better known name than Elliott Management, uh, Starboard Value also has a stake. They mm-hmm. revealed that recently. They're going to come out with their own. Letter um, at some point soon. So, pretty interesting timing. Uh, planting this flag a week before eBay reports earnings and sort of putting the CEO on notice. But I'm curious what you thought specifically of the the headline changes that Elliot is agitating for is spinning off the StubHub business and the Classifieds business. Yeah, I, I I'm not surprised to see this happening and. I think it could make sense to some degree. I think what eBay has done incredibly well over the past many years is they've done a good job pinpointing and buying businesses that are relevant and can scale. If you think about buying PayPal, buying StubHub, those turned out to have some pretty fantastic returns for eBay shareholders. So that's great. The problem is that eBay's core marketplace platform isn't the best business to to really connect to all of this other stuff. It's hard to build um, a larger, encompassing business that has synergies and is all-inclusive. And I think that we saw that with PayPal. It was obvious. PayPal isn't a marketplace. Um, but we're starting to see that now. StubHub is a marketplace. The Classifieds business is a marketplace. Um, but is eBay really the best um, connection for those companies to exist. And I think um, for the classifieds business, I think maybe it is. It's pretty similar to what eBay does, people buying and selling goods and services. I think it's mainly international, so there could be something there. Um, so that doesn't make as much sense to me. But on the StubHub side, absolutely. I can totally see StubHub being a separate business and being separate, being able to unlock value, make deals that they couldn't have otherwise. And honestly, a company like StubHub could do well independently, but it wouldn't surprise me if it got spun out and then was acquired again by someone like Amazon or SiriusXM or even connects to Spotify in some way to help those companies build a more complete music experience, adding live to just streaming. Well, you and I were talking before we started taping about the customer experience when you're looking to buy tickets, whether it's to a game or a concert. And you're essentially, once you've made the decision, I'm going to go to this thing, then it's all about well, where am I going to sit? And that's uh, that's. And by the time you get to the, it's time to buy the tickets. Yeah. That's that's when it clicks in. Like, oh my God, how much in fees am I being charged here? And but at that point, you're like, okay, all right, I'm just going to buy this because I want to go to this thing. Yeah, it's not the friendliest for the consumer, <laughs> no. but it's a pretty great business to be invested in. It tends to generate lots of cash, which can then be either just delivered straight back to investors and dividends or share repurchases, or um, use, like we see in Live Nation, which owns Ticketmaster, they continue to make lots of new deals that strengthen their ecosystem. Um, so, I could totally see someone wanting StubHub for that great business and being able to use it to strengthen a music ecosystem. And that's not going to be eBay. It makes no sense why that would be eBay. Um, so, I, I can totally buy why they'd want to spin out StubHub. And that would be about a $4 billion business. I think back to a few weeks ago when we were here in the studio. Uh, we were doing uh, Motley Fool Money first episode of 2019, it's sort of our preview of the year. And one of the things we talked about was CEOs to watch, whether they are on the hot seat or or just set up for an interesting year. Um, none of us mentioned Devin Wenig, who's the CEO at eBay, but I think the next couple of weeks are going to be really interesting for him because he took over as CEO of eBay. Back in July of 2015, when the PayPal spinoff occurred, and you think back to then, shares of eBay were around twenty six dollars a share. Today, they're around thirty three. Yeah, and and that alone isn't enough to necessarily get a CEO fired, but I think the combination of the attention being paid. Uh, because of the activist investors coming in, being very specific about unlocking value, uh, I, I really think this 
conference call next week is going to be interesting because, among other things, they're coming out of the holiday quarter. And I saw a lot of eBay commercials on television. And I'm personally, I'm as a longtime shareholder of eBay, I'm curious to see uh, not just, well, what did they put up in terms of revenue and profits, but what was their marketing spend? You know, what, mm-hmm. what did that look like? Because uh, it wouldn't surprise me at all if they came out next week and it was, oh, yeah, we, we ended up. Shooting for the moon in terms of trying to bring in revenue, and because of that, we spent a ton more on advertising than we normally do. Right. I think it'll be interesting to see how open-minded he is to changes being made. If he is stubborn, that I mean, the the previous CEO, um, he was also stubborn when it came to spinning off PayPal, and that didn't exactly work out. I think what. He should do is be open-minded um, and really recognize that some of these businesses could have value elsewhere. And I think his legacy could come from how great of a deal maker he is. Um, and even if you think about, you spin out StubHub, maybe you spin off the classifieds, then that leaves a much smaller eBay. And then what do you do with that? Does that become acquired? Do you make other partnerships with that? Um, I think that if the snowball starts rolling, it'll start accelerating. And so, maybe nothing happens, but if even something small happens, it could trigger other things um, afterwards. And so, yeah, those are legacy-making decisions on his part.